This is Movers and Shakers, where we interview the upcoming generation of make it happen multifamily investors to share their story. Welcome to the Movers and Shakers podcast. My name is Gino Barbaro, co-founder of Jake and Gino, multifamily investor, educator, father, mentor, and I'm joined by my co-host, Joshua Ryan Rusin, the community director of Jake and Gino, who is wearing a nice untucket shirt today. Josh, how are we doing, Brosif? Gino, doing well, man. I uh, Since you're wearing Kentucky as well, I wonder how we get a, a sponsor from that. That's what I'm really wondering. Open up the closet, man. You see <laughs> Untucket's lining down. You know what? They're great because, you know, you look good with them. They make you look good, don't they? Yeah, nothing wrong with the quality product. All right. So, Gino, listen, man, I'm excited. We had a huge weekend last weekend, uh, a buy right boot camp. We got the whole team together. And really, I love these events because... I mean, we can teach what would take someone a month at least to learn on their own, impact it in the weekend, plus the time to build the relationship, not only us, their coaches and other community members, but I mean, just in general, high level investors that are making it happen and you leave with so much excitement and you're fired up. And then, you know, the, the weekday comes and it, it's hit the ground running, right? Implement what you learn. So I'm, I'm still riding off that high. What, what's going on in Gino's world over Josh, the student we have on today, I'm just really trying to collect my thoughts and, and try to create a narrative for everybody. He joined in March of last year. So he's been only on the team for 18 months. And I remember meeting him at the first couple of boot camps. And the power of the boot camps that you just talked about, I mean, and, and the networking and the experience and the education, you wrap that all together. It's not just one lever. Right? It's not just the education you learn about. It's not just the networking. It's not just having the fun. It's not just being held accountable. You have to put all that together. And if you're serious about the business and you want to take it to the next level, you really need to stick around and listen to the show because guests are student, Mr. Joe, make it happen. I mean, he's had an amazing story. And, and the, listen, has it been easy? Probably not. You know, he's got a kids. He's got a full-time job. He's working through all that. He's managing his little portfolio, but at the same time, he's found enough time to actually scale up and really lock it in and to create an amazing portfolio. Yeah. Speaking of today's guest, it's Mr. Joe Sullivan. So a little bit about Joe. He spent 12 years in operations for a facility services company and has recently transitioned to full-time multifamily investor. He brings years of experience working with Fortune 500 companies into his real estate investing career. Now, in 2018, he started investing in duplexes in Kansas City, getting his feet wet in real estate investing. In 2020, he joined the Jake and Gino community and made the leap into multifamily investing. Now, January of this year, he joined the MIH Mastermind Group, and to date, he scaled his business to 400 plus units in the Midwest. He's also the co-host of the KC Multifamily and More, which is a, a real estate networking group that was virtually sessions that share his passion for real estate with others. He found his passion for multifamily after his coach and now partner encouraged him to push past limiting beliefs. His why is to leave a legacy for generations to come in his family and allow him freedom for his family. Joe resides in Kansas City with his wife and four daughters. Welcome to the show, Joe. Wow, thanks for the introduction, man. That's uh, that's awesome. Uh, very blessed to be here. It's super excited. I know we've been uh, trying to do this for a while, so I'm excited. Yes, Joe, you know, here's what I'm excited about, man. You joined, you know, early last year and you're so humble, man, but the amount of sacrifice, discipline and dedication you took to make this work is really a testament to taking the education, the resources, the knowledge, and really putting that to work and showing how that can go so and help someone go further faster. I'd love for you to talk a little bit about, I guess, why you got in real estate, how you got in real estate, why you scaled up the multifamily. And then I really want to dive deep into how you created so much success so quickly in this space. Yeah, so uh, my why is really my family, like you mentioned, uh, a wife and uh, four daughters. Uh, we just had our fourth in March. So we have, uh, we go from nine down to five months now, uh, which, is, which is awesome and crazy all at the same time. Um, so, so that's my why, uh, the reason we got into real estate was, um, you know, I've always had an entrepreneurial itch. Uh, my, my dad has, um, has, has dabbled in a lot of different uh, businesses and, um, you know, did a lot of research on the, the most, uh, you know, successful and affluent people in the, in the world, frankly, and, you know, nine out of 10 of them are on, on some type of real estate. So, uh, didn't know exactly what we wanted to do, so but we did jump in. Uh, we started buying what, buying what I would call smalls, so like duplexes, um, with a with a friend and partner uh, and my wife, uh, and then quickly realized 
uh, after about a year that uh, we couldn't scale it um, and needed to find a, a more efficient, you know, just a better way uh, to do this. Uh, and I was bound to determine uh, to make this, you know, to make this work. So uh, at that point, we decided to uh, get educated. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, that's when we joined the, uh, the Jake and Gino group invested in our education. I say invested with emphasis because, mm-hmm. um, you know, uh, two years ago, I would have considered it a cost. Uh, but today and now it's, uh, it's, you know, I'm actually excited to, you know, invest in my education and plan to do so uh, moving forward. Joe, can you share a story with me that you were just speaking off camera before of every time your boss got a contract or you got a contract for your boss, you were making him money. And, and that must have been a paradigm shift for you as well. Every time he signed a nice fat contract for him. And oh, by the way, he's got a, almost a billion dollar company. And what does he do? He invests in real estate. And why do most people don't see that? It's right in front of them. And 95% of the planet doesn't see that. But yet you saw that. What was that feeling like when you realized, wow, I'm making somebody really wealthy and it's not me? Yeah. So uh, I've been fortunate enough to have some success uh, in my, uh, my W-2 uh, career and uh, you know was able to grow uh, my region and portfolio within the within the organization and uh, you know when we would sign a new contract you know multi million dollar contract um, you can you know I have a, I had access to the P and Ls and you can see how much money uh, it was generating and you know ultimately that was going to uh, the ownership group's pockets and mm-hmm. um, you know over you know I was there twelve years great company uh, but. You know, realized about halfway through that um, I was not going to be able to be reaping those you know rewards. It was you know it was bonus incentivized and um, but yeah, no equity in in the company. And so. how did that make you feel? I mean, I, I mean honestly, because I never had that experience. I always owned the restaurant, and even so, I wasn't making the big bucks. I was less when they get paid. I still was working for myself. How does that feel like coming from the W-2 world where you are putting in hard work, but there's no equity, there's an opportunity as what you have right now, you're working for equity right now, you're working for generational wealth. Yeah, I mean, it was kind of deflating, you know, mm-hmm. just to, to realize that there really wasn't the upside, the upside really wasn't there. And, mm-hmm. um, and you really become kind of beholden to the, the paycheck. Mm-hmm. And, um, and we were contractors. So uh, really our, our contracts and our our jobs, frankly, were uh, at jeopardy every day. Um, I have a story about uh, the day after Christmas, um, and that's actually the reason I, I joined Jake and Gino. Uh, it was really kind of the catalyst. The day after Christmas, uh, I got a call. Uh, I had a vacation. Uh, you know, I took the week off. Got a call. Uh, with, I was with my wife heading to our in, my in-laws for Christmas, and I got a call from our our contact with a, with a major contract. And, uh, they, he notified us that we notified me that we were losing the account. Um, and that really, really, really hit home hard. Um, that, uh, my, you know, my, my future, my family's future was in somebody else's hands. Um, and really frankly, that my job was a jeopardy or could be a jeopardy. Um, even after, you know, 10, 10 years of, working hard. And, um, and, and really that weekend, I, my wife and I sat down and we're like, we got to, we're, we're going to do something different. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and that was the kind of the tipping point for us. I want everyone to stop and think about that for a second, because I had the same experience. Everyone says the life of an entrepreneur and the life of an investor is risky. It is, but what about the life of a W2 employee or the life of a small business owner owning one restaurant Corona, everybody, all of a sudden, Corona hits, I could lose a restaurant. And up there, I probably would have lost a restaurant in New York. And the same thing with Joe, one account, he's one account away from losing his job. So if you are using risk and uncertainty and fear is holding you back, that's not what should be holding you back. Maybe if you're talking about working harder, you don't want to work hard. That's probably the only thing that should be holding you back. Not risk and not uncertainty, and not fear, because we all have that. We all experience that. So as you can see, Joe's life was up upended because of a contract that he almost lost and he's ready to go on vacation. That's a powerful story. In 2018, you started buying duplexes. What problems were you experiencing with real estate before you joined Jake and Gino? Why, what was the catalyst? That was a split catalyst, but what was the real reason? What were you looking for when you joined Jake and Gino? Yeah. So when we had our, I call it when we owned our, we still own them, our, our smalls, our duplexes. Um, the, I was doing everything, you know, mm-hmm. I was everything from the accounting to mowing the lawn mm-hmm. and, uh, 
Yeah, I mean, it was it was pretty pretty brutal. Uh, mm-hmm. No free time for the for the family, and uh, just realized very quickly, um, you know, mowing a lawn at uh, seven thirty at night before it gets dark, and then having to load the trailer up and get back home to to have dinner with the kids and the family. Realized that there there has to be a better way, and mm-hmm. um, so did a lot of research and. And that's when I got educated and joined a joined a group of the Jake and Gino community, and uh, um, and really took off from there. What did you get specifically out of the group? Was it the mentorship? Was it the education? Was it the networking? Was it the accountability? What specifically was the catalyst? Yeah, I, I jumped in head first, uh, and um, it was really all of the above. So uh, right away, I, I hit the uh, the networking, the events, so the the boot camps. The money mixers and, and got out and met people um tried to figure out where i could add value to others who were who were frankly who were uh, where i wanted to be mm-hmm. um and then it's the mentorship so the coaches uh, you know i leaned in hard with my coaches um and, and spent a lot of time with them got on calls with them uh, they're all such go-givers that they're willing to you know take calls uh you know, even on weekends in some cases. Uh, and then from there, it was just the mentorship. So I really uh, partnered up with my coaches and found them as, as mentors. I looked for people who were, you know, several, basically where I wanted to be essentially and tried to figure out how I could add value to them. You know, and, and I was fortunate enough to be in a market. I'm in Kansas City, uh, in a market that, uh, you know, typically Midwest cash flows. And, um, and and really my opportunity to add value was to find deals. Um, and uh, so I, I really leaned into that um, and, you know, tried to add value with with no strings attached, really not expecting anything back, but just really wanting to to add value and work with people who are doing what I wanted to do. You said, Joe, where I want to be. Where is it that you wanted to be when you started out with the Jake and Gino community? Uh, my goal was 100 doors. That was my first goal. That's so, a big goal. I mean, when you first start out, it took Jake and us, Jake and myself. I mean, our first deal took 18 months. And then, you know, I started born in 2013, but going back to 2011, 2015, I hit that. It, it took almost three and a half to four years to get 200 units. Cause that, you know, the third deal is 136 units. So you wanted a hundred doors by the end, by how long did, did you want to see that happen? In 12 months, that was the goal. I thought it was, a, it was Huge. my stretch goal. Yeah. yeah it, it was my, like, you know, the BHAG, my big hairy audacious goal at the time. And mm-hmm. um, yeah, but by surrounding myself with people who had already been there or already there, uh, it happened pretty fast. So that, that was uh that was awesome. And how many units do you currently have right now or are partnered up with right now? Uh, we're just over 400. I'm just over 400. And then um, we have uh, another 100 and about 200 in contract. So, so we'll be, you want uh, you want 100 in 12 months. And now it seems as if you're going to be at 600 plus in 18 months. What was the epiphany? I mean, how did that happen? Because when you first start out, I would think 100 is a huge stretch goal. To even achieve that is a, it's a massive undertaking. How, what led to that, I mean, that massive exponential growth in the last 18 months? It was partnerships. It was mm-hmm. finding partner. I found all of the partners I have now in the community. Um, my coaches, I'm partnering with what were my coaches mm-hmm. um, and then other students as well. Uh, so it was really, it was really just partnerships, finding what my strengths were and, and finding partners who had, uh, you know, counterbalancing strengths mm-hmm. uh, to mine. And, and, um, and we just uh, leaned in and, and really uh, just really leveraged each other, frankly. So there's a couple of things I'd like to mention. First thing is you keep mentioning hard work. Everyone who's listening to this, please take that away. Nothing is easy in life. There's a lot of hard work that goes into it. Joe's got four kids. He's coming to the events. His wife is pregnant. I remember seeing him last year in Knoxville. His wife was pregnant. It is truly hard work. He's balancing a W-2 job. Can you break down a couple of really golden nuggets of what you've learned over the last 18 months? I think partnerships is, is, is really key. And big shout out to my brother. I mean, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing that you met Marco, because sometimes he can drive you nuts, but love you, Mark. Just joking. <laughs> but I mean, honestly, the partnership is very important. The proximity to people is very important. The accountability. What other? What else did you learn? I mean, as far as technical, did you learn anything about me, the buying right? I know you mentioned something about refinancing. You never even knew that before. Some things that you learned that you can share with the listeners. Yeah, I mean, as far as like the technical, I, I learned 
uh, so much. Um, you know, like for example, we, we, my wife and I bought a six unit um, right before we joined the group and uh, with, with only intention of holding it in cash flowing. And then, um, you know, join the group and realize, uh, learn what a, you know, cash out refi was mm. and a refi and roll, I should say. Um, so we refied uh, the property here and uh, got all our initial investment back. How much um, was that that you got back? Uh, it was, uh, I think, 75000 So I want everyone to understand this. That's why he calls the mentorship an investment. He invested 20 k and he got back 75 k Think about that, everybody. On one deal, going forward. He's already paid and he's already 3X his investment from that one deal. Then we talk about cost segregation. Then we talk about partnerships. Then we talk about the whole thing. You're going to be getting a nice cost seg deal swell, aren't you, huh? You're going to get a lot of tax money back, aren't you, huh? Oh, yeah. Cost seg, baby. <laughs> so if you, if you hadn't joined the community, would it be fair to say that you would even know what cost seg was or even be thinking that big? Absolutely. Yeah. And we're doing cost segs on all of our deals now. I, had, I didn't even know what the concept was before I joined, but, but now it's just part of our... Our systems. Once we once we close a deal, uh, we call our our cost a guy and and they get get it signed up. Let it freaking rain. That's all I'm gonna say. Going from a small six unit deal and to a lot of people, seventy five k may not be a lot. To me, it's a ton of money. Pulling that money out, refinancing, rolling into the next deal, buying the next deal. Then all of a sudden, having the epiphany that I can start cost segregating. So when I do leave my W-2 job, all of a sudden, I can start taking active income against those losses. All of a sudden, home run. I mean, wow. I, I didn't mean to cut you off, Joe, because it's freaking, it's exciting to see the progression. And it's it's so quickly. I mean, some people take a little bit longer. Some, take, some people don't have the ability to get out of their W-2s quickly because they're so, they're so strapped with time. Some people just it's their beliefs. It's their limiting beliefs. If your behaviors are belief driven and you don't believe you can do it, what made you believe you could do it? What made you think that Joe Sullivan can do it? I mean, a hundred doors, even putting that on a piece of paper is scary. What gave you that belief that you could do it? You know, it's really just, um, for me, it was, if I'm going to bet on anything, I'm going to bet on myself. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, re really lean into uh, taking ownership in our lives, to, you know, kind of, kind of taking back control of our lives. Mm -hmm. um, that, that's really what it was. And, and we, you know, my wife and I went over because we're very conservative by nature. Both of our families are. So we went over what's the worst case scenario if if it doesn't doesn't work out. So we, we did the whole that whole thing. And, um, you know, the, the, it was actually more uh, is scarier, actually, for for me, at least to stay in the same rut and routine with a W-2 than to to try to to try to break free uh, in, into real estate. So you know, you realized, as I did, at an age that we we're we were made for greater things. We weren't made for the W two rat race. We were made to leave lives with soul, you know, our sole purpose. That's what we relate to me. I, I love that. You know, what does it look like right now, building your own dream? What does that feel like? Well, it's when when I was finally able to, uh, you know, walk away from my W two. There's a huge weight lifted off my shoulders, mm. um, and, and now it's just it it feels like freedom. I, I wake up every morning. Um, and, and loving what I'm doing. You know, I had, I had mornings in the past where, uh, a lot of them where I just frankly hated, hated waking up because I knew I had to, to go to work. And now it's, you jump out of bed and you're excited to go, you know, jump out of bed, you get your workout in and, um, and, it, and you're just excited for, to, you know, to take on the world. And, uh, my wife, you know, she can, she tells me, she can attest that she says I'm happier and, you know, the, I'm sure the kids can see it, um, and it's just a uh, it's just a much better uh, better life right now. As MJ DeMarco says, the Monday through Friday is the human construct. If you ask me on any particular day, I don't know what day it is. I could care less if it's a Monday or a Friday. Work just as hard. The weekends worked at the boot camp. Don't really care what day it is anymore. And that's the feeling that we're all trying to achieve. Is it's a Monday or Wednesday. What the hell is hump day mean? I don't have a hump day. I love Wednesdays just as much as I love Mondays and Fridays. So that's the mentality that I want everyone to achieve for, to strive for. So, I mean, Joe, that's, that's, that's freaking phenomenal. And my last question before getting into the short answers, what do you love about the business? What is your, I, I guess your, your superpower in, in multifamily? Uh, I really enjoy finding deals. That was kind of, mm -hmm. that's where I was able to add value. To, to my mentors and, you know, be able, fortunate enough to partner with them on, on deals. 
Um, that's that's exciting to me. Um, but you know, I also re really like to see properties transform and be able to provide a, a safe, clean environment uh, for for residents. Um, that, that's pretty exciting too. Like we just finished a, a parking lot project on a on a property, and it was you know the parking lot was was really rough, and uh, we took care of it. And we've got a lot of really p positive feedback, so um, you know that, that gets me excited to to be able to provide them a, a better place to live. Love that. Changing people's lives. Let's take a quick time out to hear from our sponsors. Are you looking for ways to improve your life? Here at Jake and Gino, our mission is to empower students through financial education and the vehicle of multifamily investing. Yes, Jake. We agree that a person with financial intelligence can change the world for the better. We've created our proprietary three-step framework, buy right, manage right, and finance right, that we teach to our community. This framework, along with education, our one-on-one -on -one mentorship, on-site boot camps, and the amazing community has propelled our students to massive success. We've all been there. We've had so many students that have been able to shift their mindset, overcome limiting beliefs, and set a clear path to achieve their goals. Whether you're currently fixing and flipping, wholesaling, or buying single-family rentals, and you know that multifamily investing is the right vehicle for you, I encourage you to visit jakeandgino.com forward slash apply to schedule your complimentary consultation with our team. And I want to let you know, this isn't a high pressure sales call. It's really just a discovery call to get to know each other better and see if we're a good fit for working together. And if for any reason we're not a good fit, our team has tons of resources we will share with you to help you along your journey. If you're ready to stop spinning your wheels, go to jakeandgino.com forward slash apply and schedule your call now. All right, Joe, I got some short answer questions for you. So let's take it back. Let's say you're speaking to a brand new investor. They know they want to get into multifamily, but they're not sure how or what to do. What tip would you give that person and why? Uh, a brand new investor, I would tell them to get, get educated, um, to, to really get educated and, and try to find somebody who is uh, several steps ahead of you in, in your in the journey you want to take and add value to them with without expecting anything. Uh, and that's the key is to just to be a go-giver and to, to add value to them. Joe, I love that. All right. So I got another really good one for you. I'm gonna throw a bit of a curveball. So you've got the nickname Joey DTS Sullivan, so direct to seller. So you've been able to deal source in an incredibly tight market. What tips would you have for people that are struggling to find deals in today's market? Yes, that, I did get that uh, <laughs> that nickname from from Marco. <laughs> it stuck. Uh, so my tips are uh, to really network. Uh, so it's um, you know I get deals from cold calling um, from bro from brokers off market, and then uh, and then um, networking. Frankly, so um, to really be yourself, be personable and, and get, put yourself out there, let people know what you want to do. And, um, and you know, the deals or the opportunities, uh, will start to come to you. I think the important thing, Joe also is sharing the story of closing on a hundred units. And then all of a sudden you're doing your due diligence and you walk across the street and you ask the seller across the street, Hey, do you want to sell? You always have to be on the lookout for opportunities and they are all around us. The mom and pops are burned out. They are all around us. So keep your eyes open. Keep your ears open. Let everybody know. Let your Aunt Sally know. Let the banker know. Let your, you know, let your, you know, your cost seg guy know. Let everybody know that you're in doing deals. And that's the important thing. Just letting people know that you're in this space. Love it. All right, Joe, last question for you. What's your favorite book? My favorite book. If you're like my brother, you probably don't read, Joe. So you, you, you got to give me a book here. <laughs> No, no, I'm, I'm, I can't. I know the author. The author's Dan Sullivan. I just can't think of the, oh, uh, yes. the name of the coach. book. He's awesome. Yeah, great. He's got some great stuff out there, dude. Love it. See, see if I can. Who think not of. how? Is that what you're yes, thinking of? Yes, yes. Thank you, Josh. Yeah, who not how? Yep. That was my, one of my most recent favorite books. Mm -hmm. All right. Love awesome. it. I've heard good things about that one. Haven't read it yet. Okay. Gino, give us a wrap up, man. Tell us what happened today. So you want me to wrap this? This is this is an this is a cool story because in 2018, Joe starts buying duplexes. He calls them twos and threes and smalls, right? That's where we start out. We start out with the small because that's what we think we can do. And then that fateful Christmas vacation in 2019, he gets the call from one of his 
contracts saying that, hey, I don't know if vacation is going to be going to be around this week. We're going to be losing a contract. So Joe sits down and he thinks about his future and he says, this is a rat race. I mean, it's just as risky working for somebody, making somebody wealthy while I'm getting paid my W-2 salary. And that I, there's no growth here. There's no personal growth. There's no equity. There's no wealth generation. Joins the Jake and Gino community in March of 2020 with, with the big aspirations of doing 100 units. I don't think he knew at the time how to do that. But as Jake likes to say, he leaned in to the process, went to the boot camps, went to the Monday trainings. He went and did his accountability pods. He had his coaches and he really educated himself. And more importantly, he utilized a network. He found all of his partners there. He created a great relationship with my brother as well. And just meeting all the different students and presenting the deals and finding what, out what his superpower was. His superpower is DTS direct the seller and, and creating that. And then having the vision of leaving his W2 job one day from scaling up. And it's happened so quickly within 18 months, he's going to be over, over 600 units. It's an amazing testament, an amazing story to everybody listening that if you have your why, you'll figure out how to do it. But it all starts with mentorship. And it all starts for me with investing in yourself. You need to invest in yourself to find out how you, and you're going to ultimately become successful in this business. Oh, Joe, I got to give it to you, man. You're the epitome of make it happen. So the, the success is well-deserved. How can the listeners get a hold of you? Uh, they can reach out to me uh, via email at uh, joe at sharplineequity.com. All right. Well, listen, awesome. guys, I want to thank you for being an amazing guest on the show and sharing your movers and shakers story. Now, listen, if you like the show, please leave us a review. And until next time, let's make it a movers and shakers week. See you, everybody. Thanks, Joe. Thank you, guys. Have a great day.